Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Monica. I am an ex hanba I did Mary Kay and Beachbody several years ago, and because of my experiences, I have become extremely anti-MLM. Today's video is a little different. Uh, some of you that are in my anti-MLM Facebook group, you guys already know about uh, how I had a collaboration in the works for you guys. And today I will be talking to um, the recovering Hunbot. So if you guys aren't subscribed to her, I will leave her link below. We basically just had a phone call with each other. Uh, the video and the audio quality might be a little iffy, only because it all depended on, you know, our internet connection and all that kind of stuff. So without further ado, here is my discussion with the recovering Hunbot. So I hope you enjoy, and let's get into it. Also, to add real quick, I completely forgot <laughs> to put in the intro of this that um, the part one is actually on the Recovering Hanbots YouTube. This is part two. So I'm so sorry um, that I completely forgot about that. But yeah, okay, now let's get into the video. Okay, I'm gonna start with overall the, the company structure. And I, I put this on Instagram. I made a post that says uh, something like corruption breeds corruption. It's a corrupt mm -hmm. business model. And so for you to succeed, you have got to become corrupt somehow. Yeah. Since I'm still in those beach body groups, I was in there and I did a video on this too, because it was a bunch of hun bots and they're asking each other questions about somebody has this, a potential challenger has this issue or that issue. And what do you know? And so they're like, they're, they're asking each other for help about conditions people have. But they don't know what else to do, you know? Yeah. And they're not they're not gonna think, well, gee, go go consult your doctor. I mean, maybe some of them will, but they're going to take what they're told within that group and go back and tell somebody that stuff, but they have no basis for it. Same thing with the young living oils when people are like, Well, if you have this issue, what do you use? And then you get a bunch of people saying what to use. It's like mm -hmm. all of it is incredibly corrupt it's a lot of misinformation i don't care what mlm you slap on it it's going to be misinformation it's going to be information that can damage someone and what it does to you as an individual who participates in it, it to me i fully believe it damages you psychologically yeah yeah I'm, I'm not gonna lie after after my experience i actually i do agree with you because after both experiences um i mean for me it's i've overcome it and it's done and over but whenever i get a message from someone on social media i always wonder like is this going to turn into a pitch or is this someone just trying to become my friend to give me some kind of you know story about oh you have to try this like and and it happens within families too one of my friends when she saw i forget i think it was my lularoe video um when she saw it she actually reached out to me on instagram and she told me i had to keep her name anonymous and stuff like that because she didn't want her family member to know but um what happened was a uh, long time ago she i forget which mlm she was doing but she ended up she decided it's not for her she didn't really have a bad experience it's just she's a mom she has I think she has like five or six kids so she's busy um and she, it just she couldn't it just wasn't working for her anymore and um so her i think it was her sister-in-law i think it was her sister-in-law um she was a beach body coach and she was trying to get my friend to sign up under her and to do the workouts and stuff like that and my friend told her you know i'm, I'm really sorry but it's kind of expensive for me because i I don't know if the if the challenge pack changed, but wasn't it like two hundred something dollars back when we were coaches? Uh, one forty. Like to, to. Okay. Okay. Um. So she actually told her she was like, "Yeah, it it was. It's just it's too expensive for me." And she found some some workouts for free on YouTube, and she started her own diet because she found a diet that would work for her and for her health you know for her health because every single person is different actually ended up uh just completely cutting her out of her life when she saw that she was posting progress pictures and that was that was that 
And it, she told me it's been super awkward ever since then. And it's been, it's been a while. So, and I was like, that's just, that's just an example of how these MLMs, they, they just, they can tear apart families in a sense. I know that that sounds dramatic, but it's, it's a possibility. No, I don't think it sounds dramatic at all because I think overall it just damages relationships. Um, and you know, you mm -hmm. think that like whenever you get a message, is this going to turn into a pitch? Every time I get a message, I'm like, oh my God, what, you know, what do they want? I immediately go in mm -hmm. defensive mode because it's just like, and I'm like, ah, yeah. you know, it's, I can't help it. Um, not too long yeah. ago, it was on my birthday and there was someone who had been a body coach and we had been fairly close. She sent me something and it ended up basically that she wanted to send me samples for some makeup or something that she's doing. I don't know if she's still doing beach body or not. A couple of weeks ago, she sends me a message and it's no message to me. It's just as linked to the skincare test. And I just sent back, no, thank you. And that's, that's it. And she did, there's been no more back and forth. So I'm like, okay, so you didn't make it at beach body. Now you've gone to something else and all you're doing is the same thing. It's just anybody I know, they're going to get the message. And it just mm -hmm. hits me now. I mean, now, okay, let me just preface this, that anybody who is a Hunbot or has been a Hunbot, they're always going to be welcome in my community with open arms mm -hmm. and with love to be there to support. But when I'm being approached that way, that makes me not want to be around these people because I'm like, I know what it's like. I know the pressure that you're under. I was under it too. And I did all of this stuff. And, and that's honestly, that's, that's the sad truth, especially like when, when I know people that are distributors, presenters, coaches, whatever you want to call them. Um, and I see that they message me. It's always like, okay. Cause I know that my coaches told me if they say no, just, just keep bugging them. And it's like, okay, I said this in my first video, but no means no. <laughs> like just because someone says no no thank you they're just being polite um it's not that they want to sign it's not that they secretly want to sign up with you it's they're just being polite because they like you they respect you as a person and they don't want to automatically attack you and be like i don't want to be part of your pyramid scheme so it's it's just one of those things where when someone said no to me because i would do the post like oh message me if you want more details and people would message me and if they said, no, thank you, I left it at that. But my coaches would, would always say, just hound them, just message them again. And I'm just like, I, I can't do that. I can't do that to a person because I know how annoying that is. So I'm not going to do that to somebody else. And that was towards the end. I, I was doing these challenge groups basically for free because no one was even buying the Shakeology. So I decided, you know what? I love the people in my groups, like the people that reach out to me and say, I've lost so much weight or I feel so much better. I, I went to the doctor and they said that my results came back and I'm, I'm so much healthier than I was a year ago. It was great hearing those things, but at the same time, like I was so burnt out and I was not making any money. Yeah. So there was that. <laughs> Running those challenge groups is beyond exhausting. Mm-hmm. On so many ways. I, I was always the only one who was active. It was always me. Yeah. And that sucked. You know, I'm like, no one else cared. And I was busting my butt and it, it didn't, it doesn't matter how hard you work. It truly doesn't. Mm -hmm. And they, they get you convinced. And, and there's still a part of me that's like, well, maybe I just needed to work harder. Maybe there's something I didn't do. And it's like, girl, stop that. But there's still that tape yeah. that plays because it becomes so ingrained in you because you're indoctrinated into their, their whole thing, their cold mm -hmm. mindset, because that's all it is. is we keep being exposed to that same message again and again and again and again. Oh, this brings me back to something else, that whole thing of like people saying that they're their own business. And I can't remember what company it was, but it's in a fairly recent video that I did. I wish I could remember what company it was. It might've been unique, I don't remember. But anyway, that message is given to you by the company. Hunbots did not wake up one day and be like, I'm my own boss. That message is told to you from the company, mm -hmm. from your upline, from all the different things that you're hearing from whatever training, and I have to use that loosely, that you go through, but you are told that. 
And again, if you're told that enough times, you believe mm -hmm. that. But you're getting a 1099 at the end of the year, you know? You're an independent contractor. You're not your own CEO. Yeah. But they want you to think that. And it's, it's, But then I also see other coaches, Beachbody coaches, they're doing other and big time coaches. They have other companies. They're doing other things on the side. And I'm thinking, well, I guess you have to do that because you really can't sustain yourself on Beachbody. But yet you're still advocating for the fact that people can have a life of freedom, financial freedom from this opportunity, mm -hmm. which is annoying. Yeah. yeah. It is. And, and it's, it's sad because, you know, they try to, the people that they target, it's, it's just, it's so sad. And there was one girl who, um, she was actually talking to me today and she told me that, uh, she got sucked into Young Living because of, she was going through a divorce. It was an abusive marriage. And so she was in a really, really, really bad spot. And this Hanbot used that to their advantage. And they tried to spew the whole, well, you're going through all of this. So, you know, this will help you get financial freedom. This will help you be your own boss and be able to stay home with your son and blah, blah, blah. And it's just like, how can you take a situation like that, a person who you know is going through a shit ton of stuff, and just use that to make money? I mean, I don't know. Maybe I'm just too nice of a person, <laughs> but it's just, I don't know. I, I just, I, I don't understand how, how they can just be so predatory. And I mean, I know that that's the structure of an MLM, it is, but I mean, I've had, I've had so many people reach out to me. Um, there was one girl that commented, I actually talked about it in my Arbon video, but she said that an Arbon person contacted her and said, oh, I see that you have diabetes. You should totally, you know, try my program. And it's like, okay, you're, you're crossing that line of this is a medical issue. She has lived with this medical issue. And this girl has, you know, a big support group. She has a big Facebook group about how to... I guess, go through life with, because she has type one. And, but this girl just completely used that. And I'm just like, oh, you can't, you can't do that, <laughs> honey. <laughs> you know, I go back to when you're in hun mode, you're oblivious to all of that. You're mm -hmm. so oblivious that you are using things that you shouldn't be using. Because you're so focused yeah. on what you're trying to do. You're not realizing the ripple effect of what, of all of it. Because if you did, you wouldn't do it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, I can't. So that's. Go on. No, I was just going to say that's, that's why I don't know if it's that these people are just so brainwashed because of the cult-like mentality or if they just really don't care. So that's kind of the, the hard thing for me to figure out is it just that they were brainwashed enough or, or do they really not care and they're just trying to make money off of people because those people exist everywhere both both of those groups of people so but i mean i don't know i really I, don't know that's so sad <laughs> I think it's a little bit of each um myself for example i would say i i was full-on just brainwashed you know mm -hmm. and there yeah was same here there was a line I would not cross because it just, I, like I told you earlier, I felt like I just needed to take a shower. It was like just doing the things that I was told to do that if I kept doing them, that I would have success. And it didn't mm -hmm. feel good. I felt, I felt dirty. It just felt, yeah. you know, but I kept thinking like, well, but this is, what else am I supposed to do? I've gone everywhere. I've joined all these things. I'm being told the same thing. So I guess that's what I do. But it felt so wrong. But I do think there are those people who start having, quote, success. And that's where that corrupt company creates a corrupt person. And then they become mm -hmm. willing to do things. You know, it's almost like you take one step closer to the fire, another step, and another step. And before you know it, you're burning up. It, it, it's, I think it's like that. It's over time especially for the people that are at the top. And I'm going to, um, I'm thinking of this one particular um, presenter for Unique. 
who um, Beauty by Ashley has done several videos on her. I've done videos on her too. I haven't. Yep, I know exactly what you're talking about. Okay. I really think that she's someone that got too close to the fire and is being burned mm -hmm. up by the corruption and is willing to, to do that stuff over and over and over again. And I really do feel like it's that. I think that I think at some point it's like you sell your soul, you know. Yeah. And you have to maintain. And so the only way to maintain. And my video that I did with Nicole, who um, we did it on business coaching, and she talked about that when she did start doing some program. The thing that kept on playing in her mind was that I've got to get my money back. I've got to get my money back. And she knew, consciously knew that what she was providing was like, oh, it's not really worth that, but she was looking to make that money back. And so I think there's some of that that's mm -hmm. involved too, that you just become willing to do things that you wouldn't normally do based on the corrupt business model is my take on it. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I actually agree with you a hundred percent. I just hope that the more people, and that's why I love doing the stories. Is I think our stories are so important because most mm -hmm. people don't speak out again that's why I was so glad that you did speak out it's like yay someone else that's willing to put their <laughs> things out there and you know yeah. and take one for the team so to speak because there is power in our voice there is power in our stories there is power with more people talking about it because as more people talk about it it spreads it's that ripple effect and hopefully we can save people from joining. And then hopefully people who are full on hunting right now, maybe they'll stumble across this video and be like, damn, what am I doing? And make a decision yeah. that they need to get out. Yeah. yeah. Ex hun bots unite. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you know, and, and I don't think I see so many people who are not hun bots and not to take anything away from them. But I think there's more power in the message as a former Hunbot to be able to talk about this stuff because we were in the, the firing line, so to speak. We were in the yeah. thick of it. And when you're not yeah. in the thick of it, there's nuances you can't possibly understand because you, you just, you know, it's just like with anything else, you know? I mean, I've never been pregnant, so I don't mm -hmm. know what it's like to have a baby, you know? Yeah, same, yeah, same thing. Yeah. I don't know. It's just like, you know, when I, because I have watched of quite a number of anti-MLM videos, and some of them are from people that are outsiders looking in, and I think that their videos are great, and they find some good, some good juicy content, but I think that it speaks volumes when ex hunbots actually talk about it, and actually say, like, I was there, so you can't tell me that I don't know because I wasn't there because I was, I was where you're at right now. And, you know, I did the whole don't give up thing. You have to keep going and stuff like that. And it's just, you have to give up because it's, it's not, it's built to make you fail. It's not built to make you succeed unless you get in from the ground level, really. Well, you know, I, I'm going to say not always on, on the ground level because there was something that I did get in on the ground level. And you know what? I didn't have any success. You know why? I didn't have any influence. The people yeah. who get in and then learn somehow how to market themselves, because there is a skill in marketing yourself, you know? Mm -hmm. I think that's part of it. And I think also, looking at all of this, yeah. what's funny to me is, here we are on YouTube, and I'm building a community, you're building a community. Something that I always wanted to build, you know, as a Hunbot, which I'm glad I never did, thankfully I didn't. Um, and it's like, I'm building something that I mm -hmm. always wanted and I'm passionate about it. It's like, so you have to, all of those things have to be in place. And for me, I know when I was doing Beachbody, yes, I have a passion that people need to work out, but I, I did, it didn't come from the heart the way this is coming from my heart. So I think mm -hmm. that some people, when they get into something, they have to be like all in, either that or they can just project it. Maybe they're just actors and and they can just pretend they're just really good at that. And I think it goes back to, again, yeah. cutting corrupt 
and I, I think back on that thing that I joined that I did not have success and I did it early. It actually, it was an affiliate program, okay? But you could get other mm -hmm. people to be affiliates underneath you. It wasn't really MLM, but it was very, it was similar in a way. But now all of mm -hmm. that has been pushed aside. And it's like, it was interesting because a webinar that this person did, the owner of the company, I think they have like 90,000 people in their network, not necessarily paying for anything, but through all the marketing and all the people that were signed up as affiliates, myself included, how many people did all of us, and let's just say that it was 3,000 of us, I don't remember what the number is, but just say 3,000 people. 3,000 people brought in 10,000 versus one person who brought in like 80,000. The owner of the company, because you're always there, you have the money, you have the means, you're marketing yourself, of course you are going to get more attention than what we are. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And at some point I'll do a video on that. I'm not ready to do that yet, but there's, there's, and this is someone who was successful, or says he was successful in MLM. He was on the leaderboard with Ray Higdon. You've probably heard of Ray Higdon. Yeah, ever since I created my anti-MLM Facebook group, literally that guy keeps popping up on all of my like sponsored things and I keep reporting it to Facebook. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, Facebook, I have an anti-MLM Facebook group. Why are you showing me this? And the thing that bothers me is that now I'm starting to see, so I'm starting to take screenshots of it just in case if I ever need it. But like I'm seeing these people pop up in my sponsored and they're talking about recruiting. They're not talking about, and they're part of MLMs. Mm -hmm. They're not talking about products. They're talking about this is how you recruit people. Why does Facebook allow that? Because that is pyramid scheme ish. Yeah. It, it's just, it, it's, I don't, I don't get it because like for our, for our CBD business, we can't, we can't do anything on Facebook. Like we can't, we can post on Facebook, but we can't do any promotions. We can't do any sponsored ads or anything like that. But you're going to allow people that are basically advertising a pyramid scheme model to do that on your, on your platform. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> I know like Ray, um, cause I am in his, a, a group, a paid group, a lifetime thing that I got. And one day I'm going to go in there and get some screenshots of some stuff. I haven't yet, but I'm going to. Um, mm -hmm. He's not an MLM now, which is also curious. Again, you're not an MLM, but yet you're teaching everybody how to recruit and how to do all these things so they can have success at MLM, but you're not doing MLM mm -hmm. because it's not a way to actually make money. I see so many people going yeah. in. This, and I point to you is that these people that you're seeing, probably a lot of them are these business coaches that they're going to help you with their system and their funnel and their this and their that. I bought into Ubly, big mistake, $4,000 on the credit card so I could leapfrog into that six figures. No, I leapfrog right into debt. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. all of those, but all of these people are paying Facebook for their ads. What does Facebook make money from? Ads. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, it's so frustrating because there was actually the, the reason why I know about that Ray character is <laughs> um, I stumbled upon an, an article that he wrote and it says it was something along the lines of like how to, what was it called exactly? Basically it was how to approach someone who says, I don't want to be part of your MLM because I'm anti MLM or something like that. And it was so weird for me to read that because he talked in there how, oh, you can't let them see you crumble because then they're going to be like, oh, well, I thought they were going to crumble as soon as I said, I don't want to be part of your pyramid scheme. And it's like, and he actually said like, it'll be awkward. And it's like, no, it's awkward because you know that I'm anti MLM and you're approaching me anyway with your MLM bullshit. So <laughs> it's not because you didn't crumble. <laughs> it's because you're still. He's all yeah. about maintaining your posture. He talks about that. Those trainings. On yeah. Maintaining that. Yeah. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. It's always interesting how they're going to teach you how to be successful in MLM that they're not doing right now. And social media has changed so much. 
So how is it exactly that you know something that nobody else does and you're not even doing it? You're relying yeah. on stuff that you did five years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The world has changed. Yeah. I really it's... need to go in that group and see if there are some new scripts because I used a lot of his scripts um, of what to send out, which are, mm -hmm. and if you ever hear anybody say, are you open to a side project? That's straight out of Ray Higdon. Mm -hmm. and, and that's a, a lot of people have approached me after I stopped promoting Beachbody. And I would hear that and I'd be like, oh, so you're part of such and such too. And we're not supposed to be pitching each other in there. So I was like, interesting. Everybody's just running around trying to find anyone to bite and join the MLM. That's what it comes down to. And they're running around joining us. Did yeah. I? Spending money, joining different things, trying to find the secret sauce so that you can get to the top of that pyramid and then keep on recruiting. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's, I don't know. I just, I'm just really glad that um, there is an anti MLM community. I'm really glad that it came into my life. How, how did the anti MLM stuff come into your life? Um, how did it? I mean, I started on my own being super anti MLM from getting all of those hey girl messages on Instagram and it started getting really annoying. So I actually, I went on YouTube and I didn't even type anything in. It's almost as if YouTube like read my, my mind and I stumbled upon whose video was it? I think it was Savannah Marie's video. Which one was it about? I think it was her Young Living video that it actually brought me to. And, and so I started watching her stuff. And then once I started watching her stuff, then I saw um, Kiki. Yeah. I, I forget how to say her last name. But then I saw her pop up. And I was like, oh, so this is like an actual thing. Then I went to the subreddit. And then I was like, oh, holy crap. Like, this is a whole entire movement. And then um, you had commented on my first video. So then I started watching your stuff. And I'm just like, wow, there's more people out there. Because at least with you and Savannah, all of us were actually part of an MLM before. So it's to hear from other people who are in it, it's kind of not necessarily nice to hear, but it's nice to know that there's other people out there that went through the same bullshit that I went through, basically. So it makes me feel less, yeah, it, it makes me feel, I guess you could say less, um, what's the word? I guess it's like less stupid in a way, because <laughs> it's not like, because I thought, am I just that dumb that like I joined this just willy-nilly because there's so many anti-MLM people out there, but then when I see other people that were also Hun bots at one point and they're anti-MLM, so I'm like, oh, it wasn't just me that got sucked into this. Like, they're just really good at just being leeches and, you know, just latching on. They're, they, they've had a lot of practice, you know, have a lot of mm -hmm. practice many, many years to, to perfect that con, you know, it's yeah. been going on for so long. And, yeah. you know, and I think about it, and honestly, it's like, I wish that it worked, you know, I wish that mm -hmm. everybody could make money from this because that would solve everything. If there was just a way for it to work, but there's not, there's not a way yeah. to work for anybody to make money. That means a lot of people have to be losing out. And that's the sad reality. And, that's mm -hmm. harm. and it's, you know, I'm just, I'm glad that I stepped away. I'm glad because I was still doing my coach fee and everything, but I wasn't promoting it for like, you know, a couple of years. And then all of a sudden the anti MLM stuff came into my recommended and I, and I was like, holy crap. And then when I realized that we were called Hunbots, I'm like, holy crap. Oh my God. Oh my God. People are talking about this. And that's just, I was just like, oh my God, I just want to hide now. But I think yeah. the MLM movement is fairly new. It's not like it's been around like, you know, since when I was hunting, I don't think it was around then, but it goes mm -hmm. back to social media brought it out, you know? We're yeah. everybody yeah. band together and are like middle finger up to this crap. And so, and yeah. I'm, yeah. you know, 
it just looked back like it, it's been a journey. And, you know, that journey brought me to where I am today. And I'm really glad that I can be a voice and mm -hmm. share my story and share other stories and connect with other people like yourself who's been there. Because then you don't feel like you're just a lone wolf. You don't feel isolated and like, oh, my gosh, how come I've been so dumb? It's like, no, it's not you. You're not dumb. It's the business model that is already perfected to suck you in in any which way that it can. And so many people think, and this really kind of irritates yeah. me, that you, you're somehow less of a person if you have joined an MLM. And I feel like there's a superiority complex some people have that are not part of, you know, have never been a hun. And they're just like, oh, how could you ever do that? It's like, well, you just don't know until you've been there. You know, just like with uh, any yeah. other just like with being in an abused relationship with anything that's taking advantage of someone, you know, and, and it just, but it bothers me that yeah. I feel that there's, and I do feel that there's people that were never Huns that are, that do Hunbot shaming. And I don't think Hunbot shaming is a good thing. Those are the people that immediately will respond like, I don't want to be part of your pyramid scheme. It's like, you're not going to get anywhere by attacking someone. That's not going to be helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, do it with some kindness. That, that whole, you know, what is it? You get more flies with honey than you do vinegar. Yeah. You know, be kind to the hunts because they're just people trying to make it and they don't realize that what they're doing is horrible. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Unfortunately, that's how it is. And that's why I always say, like, you know, I don't have anything against them personally. I just have a problem with the structure, with the MLM structure. And I don't wish them any ill will. Um, I would never do that unless if it's, you know, the, the scummy people at the top. But, you know, for those people, they just believed in something. They believed in, you know, the community and the products because they probably use the products at one point and they just think that this can be their business. So, you know, I don't wish anything bad on them. Um, um, that's why when I see the Hanbot shaming, don't get me wrong, some of this stuff is really, really hilarious, the way that things unfold, but certain things, like that's why whenever someone sends me something, I don't talk about, you know, who it is, I don't do anything like that, I'll talk about the story, but I don't want to, I'm not in the business of exposing people, because why, why am I going to do that? I'll share the stories, but I don't want to be one of those other people that just has to do that. I, I, I don't feel that I need to do that to get my point across sort of a thing. I guess that's the best way to put it. <laughs> that's, that's how I feel too. That's why I try to cover up everybody's everything because I, I don't, I'm not about the drama of it. I'm more about the structure and what it does yeah. to people, the harm that it does to people. And going back to that unique presenter, uh, the harm that it's done to her, I think, overall, and her family, based on the business model. Now, maybe she was just a jank hole to begin with. I don't know. Maybe she has a history of being a real jackass. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But I do know the majority of people that I see that join an MLM are good souls with a good heart who, like you said, just believed in something and you know mm -hmm. want something to work for them now she's doing some really messed up things and i've got a big problem with a lot of stuff that she's doing but i still feel like there's a connection of the corrupt business model and like what i said earlier of getting closer to that fire of just being willing to, to do a little bit more be a little bit more corrupt to keep maintaining everything before you know it you, you have no choice but to become you've just become that used car salesman you know yeah yeah exactly yeah all right everyone if you watched up to here thank you so much for watching make sure to like subscribe dislike whatever tickles your pickle and uh thanks for coming to my channel and i'll see you guys next time this is monica we're reporting to you live from a highway bye